Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting the ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. Hi, Molly Bay. Today is September 8th, 2021. One day till kickoff. One, baby. One. Tomorrow's the game. Is it like Christmas? It's better than Christmas. I know. This has got to be the the biggest uh, opening game ever, I think. Dallas Cowboys, Tom Brady, defending Super Bowl champions. First Are you game. even going to be able to sleep? No, I, no. <laughs> no, at all. Don't plan on it. I plan on being delirious for the game. And drunk, overrated. Drunk and delirious. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Just don't pass out. What? I don't know. You'll miss it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that was a dumb thing. I'm like, why? why? <laughs> That's half the fun of getting drunk. Passing out. <laughs> All right, we got a good game, a good podcast for you today. Uh, the game gonna, will be good too, I hope. Oh, it's going to be great. We are going to cover some Buck news, keep you up on the latest, what's going on with these guys. Uh, cover a bit, a little bit around the league. I think well, we only got a little bit of NFC South news, and then I'm going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys game with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then we're going to give our predictions. Brrr. And I have a nice little handy sheet that I printed up. Boom, boom, boom. And we are going to keep track of these predictions this year. Because I'm going to seriously try to be as completely objective as possible. I know it's not going to work. That's what Craig said on YouTube, one of our listeners. He said, I'm going to be realistic with mine, too. And his prediction was 76 to 10, (laughs) which I think is very realistic. Thank you, Craig, for that. I think so, too. I think he's a little under. I know. We might break 100. Could happen. Yes. So no fact checks or follow-ups, not because we did everything perfectly, but because I didn't get around to fact checking and following up. Oh, my gosh. What were you even doing? You know what I was doing? I was watching the Dallas Cowboys all day. That is very time-consuming. I do kind of have. Oh, You know what's so time-consuming about it is you can't skip around in plays. I didn't want to watch the defense because I don't care about their defense. Their defense is totally different this year. So watching last year ain't going to do any good. You know, I mean, it's it's almost totally different. Different players, different coach, different – and we all know Dan Quinn. I mean, we've been playing Dan Quinn for years at Atlanta, so we know what he's going to bring. So I wasn't worried about the defense, but I couldn't skip. You know, used to, you could be able to go, okay, I just want to watch offense, so you just skip to the offensive plays. You can't do that now because they've taken that feature out of Game Pass. I'll tell you what, they are going to get a strongly worded letter from me if they don't fix this. <laughs> I've got, I might I might give them till week two, maybe. That's very generous of you. I think you've been waiting patiently long enough. I've already got it wrote up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of I'm, course you do. I'm, deba- I'm old school. I like to send letters. Yeah. So it it, it means more, you know. Yep. It's impressive to me that you've drafted it up and you're just going to sit on it and hold it. Because what happens is I get emotional and angry and then I write a nasty email and then send it and then feel like crap later about it. Yeah. Well, you know, that's I have I probably got 50 emails sitting in my draft folder because I do that all the time. I'll get mad and write an email or, you know, get emotional, whatever you write an email. And I learned a long time ago, don't ever hit that send button. Until I know. You're not, you know, until you're level headed. So, so I've got like 50 sitting in my email because I. It's almost that. just cathartic just to get it out and type it and then not send it. Like you've gotten it out. Yeah. yeah you know, right. it's out of your brain. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. And then a lot of times, like the next day, you go back and you read it and you go, ooh, gosh, Jesus, man, I'm glad yeah. I didn't send that because I was a total nincompoop. Yeah, I would have felt bad about that later. Yeah. I don't have that kind of restraint, though. No, you don't. Mm-mm. Well, you don't get upset. I mean, you're just, you're very, you're very, very zen. Like a cat. Yeah. Is that <laughs> cats? You cats don't get upset. And yeah, that's what you call me all the time. I'm like a cat. Oh, that's because you lay around the house all the time. <laughs> you like to take naps. <laughs> and you're always preening. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, we got some news for the Buccaneers. Uh, what do you got for us, Molly? 
I do have a little bit of a follow-up. We had talked about Justin Watson. We couldn't remember what his injury was, and it just so happened. Greg Allman tweeted about it today, so thanks, Greg. Really? Yeah, Justin had a procedure on his knee during the summer, and it's supposed to sideline him until November. Really? So, yeah. So he is I on, did not know that. that I, so did he... Did, Greg Allman send that to you personally or no I think somebody else had asked him yeah so he could return in November there's a chance so I I mean we might need him we could have a receiver that's kind of banged up I'm not really counting on it but you never know so what else uh, today they practice inside because of the weather hot was it hot? Is that why? <laughs> I doubt Anytime it. Do they Florida ever do they... that? Do they move it inside because it's too hot? I feel like they don't do that. No, I don't. I don't think they do either. But <laughs> I think everyone in Florida is just used to being miserable. So, <laughs> 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 aren't you guys? <laughs> I don't know. It's just hot all the time there. I was when I lived down there, man. It was just you know, it was the heat and the bugs. It was the bugs were just. Ugh. Man, the bugs. Good God, I know. I I know. I've set, told this story before, but Ralph and I went down there, probably for the first Bucks game. Maybe it was the second one when we got married. Uh, I got bit by a bug, and it was still like oozing pus like three months later. And I was like, "What in the world, Florida?" Left me with a parting gift. My goodness. Yeah, they've got these little gnat things down there. Uh, I, mainly up in the panhandles where I, I remember the the gnat things, but they would they would come through the screen. There was no way to keep them out of your house. These little gnat things, and then of course they got the uh, uh, what the palmetto bugs or whatever. They're huge. They're like this big. Oh yeah, They're big roaches. And, well, and then there's the alligators. Well, yeah. I didn't know that we have those stupid water bugs here, palmetto bugs. But I guess in Florida, theirs have wings. Ours don't have wings here. Well. <clears throat> they've got alligators. I know. We, we don't have yeah, alligators. Yeah, the gators. I mean, you can't even go to Disney without the risk of gators. Like, well, you no, can't have a you. small dog or a kid in Florida. Because you I don't know how y'all do it. That's why it's all old people. <laughs> they do have manatees and dolphins. That's cool. We got dolphins too. But. And they got the big snake. It's like Australia light, basically, <laughs> is Florida. <laughs> That's funny. Right? Okay. Uh, we added rookie kicker Jorge Borregales, who we cut the other day. He's cleared waivers and is back on the practice squad. So welcome back, Jose. And then we named our four practice squad protections. I feel like I said that weird. Uh, there are Andrew Adams, tight end Dion Yelder, tackle Brandon Walton, and receiver Jaden Mickens, which I missed that, that Jaden was back on the practice squad. But he's protected this week. And um, apparently on the unofficial depth chart, Jalen Darden is the punt returner and the kick mm -hmm. returner. So Greg Alma was tweeting that today too. Are you listening, Greg? He's listening to um, and that pretty much wraps it up aside from the injury report. Um, we had, so yesterday or the first injury report, which came out, I'm so backwards on my days because it was a holiday Monday. The one that came out Monday uh, Giovanni Bernard, he was on there on Monday, Tuesday. He is also on there, but he was a full participant. <laughs> Participa what? <laughs> <laughs> participant? <laughs> All right, man. I mean, like phonetics. That's a pant. Uh, Antonio Brown, he was a full participant on Monday. Tuesday, he did not participate, though. He's got that knee injury. However... We had a few guys added to the injury report, including Steve McClendon, JPP, um, and Gronk, who all had veterans days today. Gronk was limited, but the other two, McClendon and JPP, did not practice today. And so Antonio Brown, I'm wondering if it was just a veteran 
day for him too, even though he's on the injury report with the knee. Monday he was a full participant, so uh, I can't imagine that in a day it got that much worse. Hmm. But he's still listed. And then Chris Godwin was added to the injury report today with a quad injury, and he was limited on Tuesday in practice. And we're not really going to know with him, I guess, until probably game day. Wow, really? I've got him in my fantasy league. Ooh, that sucks for you. If only you had, like, I don't know, Antonio Brown or somebody. You know, if you could see me right now, I'm flipping you off. <laughs> uh, no, he'll probably be fine. Well, Antonio is on injury report, too. There's no indication that Chris Godwin is not going to play. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. But he clearly tweaks something in practice. And then also Jordan Whitehead, he's the only one who's definitively out and not going to play Thursday. Oh, he's 100% sure not playing. Yeah, that's okay. how they're talking about it. So we will see. Um, I'll go through the Cowboys injury report to you. This is the Tuesday one. Uh, defensive end. Gosh, okay. Since I got LASIK, I used to be able to like see really small font when I was blind. I could still read up close and read really small stuff. I cannot do that since I've had LASIK. Like, I got my long vision. Not so much on my, it like evil evened out both of them. Really? Yeah. Now, did, isn't that did, weird? Did you? Was it a gradual going away, or did it like immediately after you had LASIK? Did you notice it? Uh, I because think it might be age. Pretty I mean, quickly huh? after. <laughs> pretty quickly <laughs> after LASIK, I could not read a small font as I used to be able to. Hmm. Anyway. So this font's a little small on my computer monitor. <laughs> I'm struggling here. Terrell Basham, defensive end. He's got an ankle injury. He was a full participant. Lael Collins, their uh, right tackle with that neck stinger. He's been a full participant all week. Uh, Chauncey Golston, defensive end. He's got a hamstring, full participant. Cornerback C.J. Goodwin. Has a hamstring, full participant. Defensive end, Demarcus Lawrence has a back injury, full participant. Jake McQuaid, their long snapper, has a foot injury. He was just added on Tuesday, but he's a full participant. Tackle, Ty. See, this is one of these. I'm like, I can't read that. Ty in and something. I think it's a weird, it's got a bunch of weird letters in it, too, that I don't recognize. It's hieroglyphics, guys. Uh, Ty something, tackle. He's got a foot injury. He was limited all week. He's the only one who's been limited. Uh, Dak Prescott is on the injury report with that shoulder. Full participant all week. And then safety Donovan Wilson, number six, has a groin injury. He's been a full participant all week. So Dallas looks like they're in a little bit better shape. They have more people on their injury report, but they're all full participants with the exception of one. So that's a little, eh, I don't like that so good. But they did say today, Mike McCarthy is saying that Zach Martin, that guard that we talked about in the last episode, there is a possibility that he could play. Which really surprised me, I guess. Like, he's got to have the two negative tests right in a row. So, I guess if he tests negative, like, Tuesday or Wednesday, and then again the next day, he'd be fine, theoretically, to travel with the team. And they haven't added anybody on the COVID list either. So, that's uh, not great news for the Buccaneers, I would say. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that is all that I have for Bucks news. Do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say you talked about the number of changes, you know, for the defense, uh, for the guys. You know, they could basically pick whatever number they want now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Brady apparently is not a very big fan of that. He has actually come out and said it about 20 times that it's a stupid rule. He thinks <laughs> that it gives the defense way too much of an advantage. Yeah. 
but I, you know, I agree with it. And, and he he brought up the same thing I did. He said it, it makes it very difficult on, to watch game film, you know, because you, you know, you're expecting these numbers here, and all of a sudden you're seeing like punter numbers out there, and you can't tell. Like if you see a guy running across the field and he's got number six on his jersey, and he goes and tackles somebody, you're like, well, what position does he play? Mm-hmm. Normally, you could tell right yeah. away. You know, if he's a if he's in the 50s or the 40s, he's a linebacker. You know, if he's in the 30s, 20s, he's a cornerback, safety. If he's in the 90s, he's a defensive lineman. So it, 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 it's, it's going to be weird. And he brought up some really good points about, you know, how pre-snap the quarterbacks have to call out for the linemen who to block. You know, they point out the mic. You know, they'll say stuff like 56 is Mike, 56 is Mike. And uh, – you know, they'll, they'll call for the linemen to block certain guys. And he's like, you know, we're going to be like, what what position is that? Who is that guy? He's wearing number six. What's he playing? I don't know. Just block six. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I wonder, do they not pay attention to the roster before – a game typically and maybe that's something that you do start paying attention to like you and even if you just do it on the defense you know pay attention to who the numbers are beforehand or even the odd ones like maybe the ones who are the single digits Mm -hmm. you just pay attention to those kind of remember those going into the game so Mm -hmm. you'd be prepared when you see them yeah yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things that's going to just going to take a while to get used to. It 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 just sucks. It really does suck because, you know, it's been I've been watching football for damn near half a century and it's been the same numbers for almost 50 years that I've been watching and you know, now they're just going to change it. And I don't even know why. Why are they changing it? Does it make any sense? No. No. Did they give a reason? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I wonder if it was just to make the players happy. The players wanted it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. You know, they're, well, they're, uh, they're letting people be more expressive now mm-hmm. in certain ways. You know, like the, you could you could wear these your numbers. Because I, I, I guess a lot of these guys, most of these guys were you didn't play defensive linemen in high school. You know, they played, they were quarterback or running back or something like that. They were skill position players, and then they get into college in the NFL and – they're not good enough to play skill positions or they're too big, you know, to be wide receiver anymore. So they, you know, end up gaining weight or whatever. And they move to different positions, but they want to keep their old numbers from high school. It's the only thing I can think of, but you know, they're, they're letting them be more expressive, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, the NFL is allowing the players to wear they, uh, the social justice messages on the back of their helmets. Now there's six of them they can wear. Oh, are. really? I yeah. had wondered that because I didn't see them at all during the preseason. Yeah. yeah. And, we, of course, we saw it last season, and I was like, oh, I guess they're not bringing that back. But maybe that was just the preseason, and in the regular season, they'll right. bring it back again. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the the social justice messages seem to be very restrictive to me to one branch of social justice. Mm-hmm. Here are the six messages that they can wear. They go say, say their stories, inspire change. It takes all of us, end racism, Black Lives Matter, and stop hate. Now, my favorite one is stop hate because I, that's that's kind of like wearing don't kick puppies on the back of your helmet. You know, it's just, it's just such a broad thing. Just stop hate. Well, just I was thinking <laughs> all of them with the exception of Black Lives Matter and what was the one before that one? And racism. And racism. All the other ones are kind of ambiguous. Well, say that, yeah, they're all kind of ambiguous. Well, yeah. I, say their stories. I think that's yeah. kind of a Black Lives Matter thing. Inspire change. Yeah, you know, there's that. Right. But, but there's it, a whole bunch of other social messages they could put out there, you know? Hey, yeah. What about climate change? I, save the, the spotted owls. Yeah. That's a, is that a social message? I don't even know Probably, what that is. I mean, are. some kind of environmentalism. Yeah. I don't know. Like so, everybody kind of has their cause that they care about. Yeah, that well, they, they, it is that's pretty what, limited. You put them on your cleats in October for that, right? Right. right. This yeah. Is, this is specifically for a certain uh, the targeting part of the social justice, I assume. So you know, it is allowing the guys to be more expressive. Uh, you know, and they can do celebrations now, which is good. But 
what in the world is going on with this taunting crap? You know, we touched on this, but I watched some videos the other night of some of the taunting flags penalties during the preseason, and you're like, what in the world is going on? They're really – I hope that they adjust for the regular season because if they don't, that's really going to screw some games because a lot of times you could even see – I mean, the guy would just get up and, like, you know how they'll just drop the ball? You know, they call that taunting because the other player just happened to be near them or something. They didn't really explain it. And even the announcers were like, "What is? where's the taunting at? That you know they're being real more restrictive with the taunting, which is interesting to me because that was the thing that they, the reason why they stopped celebrations is because they <laughs> said it was taunting. But now you can have whole teams celebrate. They can come off the bench, take videos in the end zone, do a whole routine. But yeah, that's not taunting. Yeah, the NFL taunting. set it up that way. I mean, they put a <laughs> they camera, put the camera in the end zone specifically for that purpose. It's just two different messages. You know, it's like, okay, we don't want to, we don't want to taunt. We don't want to make the other players feel bad that you whoop their butts. But hey, if you want to do a dance routine, that's cool. We'll video it. <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird, man. NFL, they don't ever know what they're doing. I know. Like. Well, it seems like they do this every year where they have a pet cause that they're want to yeah, change yeah. or they're mad at, you know, it's past interference a couple mm-hmm. years ago. It's been a whole bunch of different things, and it just seems like taunting is what they're going to, you know, that's their, their pet cause this time. Yeah. It, but the thing that worries me about it is it's just way too subjective, and I do not like subjective penalties. You know, because one, it's you know going to be different from ref to ref. You know, even even in in game, it's going to be different from ref to ref, and it's going to be different from ref crew to ref crew. So, and there's also you know you always got to worry about you know the scandals with the refs. Man, it's never happened in the NFL that we're aware of, mm-hmm. but this is making it a little bit easier, you know, for it to happen. Well, and the thing with taunting is there's, you have to assume their intent. You know, it's like some of these taunting calls. It's it's like, you know, the guy throws the ball kind of over his shoulder and then gets flagged for taunting. I mean, he may not have even seen the guy right next to him and had no idea that there was a guy next to him and he's flicking the ball kind of Mm -hmm. in his general direction. And so the referee is then penalizing him, impugning his character and his intention right there when it's like it, it was never there and it's um i don't yeah to me it's it it's stupid i mean it just why like they're grown-ass men are we serious right now are we yes it, I, know, I, I agree I with just, you yeah exactly they're grown men making grown man money <laughs> they let them let them and, go out there and, and tell each other go all now, don't you hurt their feelings yes <laughs> you can break their neck on the field, but don't you dare call him a mean word. Oof. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Silly. Coddling. Yeah. That's how I would, I would, coddling. We're coddling people. It's just absurd. It is. Uh, speaking of absurd, you want to talk about the Saints? Um, Not really. I don't <laughs> like the Saints. I don't. Do I have to talk about them? I just have a couple things. Okay. They asked Latavius Murray to take a pay cut and he said no so they cut him <gasps> what yeah are you serious yeah they cut Latavius Murray yes D- does that mean Tony Smith is the second string guy I don't know oh my gosh that means Jameis Winston's dual condom the best <laughs> the best dual condom in the league is no longer together his condoms <laughs> broke <laughs> uh, if you're not aware of that if you they haven't listened to the podcast. James Winston said that Latavius Murray and uh, Alvin Kamara are the best co- uh, condom, du- <laughs> dual condom in the league. Best condom running back in the league, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James. Oh, he, he is entertaining, man. You know, that's one thing New Orleans is going to get from him. Entertain- if they keep him. Entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. For better or worse, he is entertaining. Mm-hmm. For sure. The Saints also signed cornerback Desmond Trufant. So they have been looking. From the Falcons? He used to be at the Falcons? And yeah. Then yes. So he, 
you know, they've been looking for depth back there. They have Patrick Robinson retire, and I think they're not completely happy with that backfield. They had been in talks to trade for somebody, I think, with Miami. So they signed a vener- veteran corner hmm. the that's week a, before that's interesting. the week of the first game. Okay, Ralph, that is all that I have for news. So if you want to get to this preview, I'm excited to hear it. We haven't talked about this at all. I've been at work today, so yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what Ralph is going to say. Well, the sports books, all of them, which I, I'm thinking about creating an account with BetMGM since they're uh, – normally I do sports book, but, uh, or my bookie, my bookie. But I don't know. I like the, I like the MGM – set up so i might go with them i think i bet with them once gosh a long time ago but now that they got the nfl there and it's sanctioned and licensed might be a little interesting but anyhow uh they they, they have uh the bucks winning against the cowboys uh by eight points that's the spread it's a uh you bet 100 you win 90 approximately you still there? Yeah, I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. So uh, what do I think about that after watching the film? I think that's being real generous about how bad we're going to beat them. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Oh. Even their offense, even with that yes. offensive line. Yeah. You know, I felt like I hyped us up too much and discounted their offensive line in the last episode. I felt like, oh, you know, this could probably get us in, in, in a little bit of trouble, which we found ourselves in periodically over the years where we <laughs> hype up, <laughs> hey. overestimate the Bucks and underestimate our opponents. So, you know, Dallas is known for that offensive line, and it's like – you know, one guard was going to be out, and Molly is so excited, <laughs> thinking, oh, the whole unit is just going to implode. It was that one guy holding it all together. Well, I watched – I only watched two games. I watched a week one last year with, against the Rams and then week four against the Browns. Now, week five against the Giants, that's when Dak Prescott broke his leg or his ankle. So I didn't watch anything after that because I don't care. We're not playing against Andy Dalton. And like I said, I didn't watch the defense that much. I sat there and watched it, but I didn't take notes or anything because it's pretty much a whole different defense. And yeah. Half the players are different. The coaching staff's different, blah, blah, blah. So I wish it was that defense. Man, were they horrible. <laughs> they were horrible. Well, I think even if they've upgraded a little bit, it's going to take a while for that unit to be cohesive. So I'm pretty optimistic about that. Well, you know, at Atlanta – they weren't known for their awesome defense. You're right. And Dan Quinn was there for years, and he could never get that going. So, you know, he might be an overrated coach. You know, so we'll see. He's he's got a chance now to build from scratch. When he was at Seattle, he came in at midway or towards the tail end of the Legion of Boom. So it was already built. You know, so here's an opportunity for him to actually you know put his stamp on a defense. He didn't do it in Atlanta, that's for sure. <laughs> so I watched game one against the Rams. Now, you are you were talking about the offensive line. The Rams just ate them up. Really? Yeah, they were all over that. Interesting. Yeah. And he's he's not really good under pressure. Oh. Not, not, not like I, I remembered him. Being. I thought he was more of a runner. Yeah. I thought that was kind of his thing. He he is to a degree. He's not fast. He's, he's kind of a slow runner. He kind of reminds me of Jameis a little bit. Not quite as awkward, but he if you give him open up the middle, he's going to take it. And if you if you try to get him, you know he'll scramble around a little bit. But he there's there's absolutely no way he's going to scramble away from Shaquille Barrett or JPP. No way. There's no way. It's not going to happen. You know those guys are faster than him. He's he's not a fast quarterback. <laughs> okay, uh, but yeah, I was actually surprised at how you know the Rams got a real good defense and they they were eating uh, Dak's lunch. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like our chances. Well, yeah. Well, you know the Dallas went six and ten last year. Yeah. Now Dak Prescott, like I said, he got knocked out game five, uh, so 
you know the rest of the the uh, games <clears throat> you're kind of like eh, you know what that but it's not like I, they didn't really play any better or worse when Dak was in there let's see they they will here's who they beat last year they beat the Falcons the Giants in week five when Dak broke his ankle the Vikings the Bengals the 49ers and the Eagles week 16. So they won six. Not a single one of those teams had a winning record. Okay. They didn't beat anybody with a winning record last year. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> Cleveland, a couple of teams really stomped them. Uh, the Redskins stomped them. I think one of the one of the uh, scores was forty something to three or something like that. Good let me, lord. Let me look. Let me look real quick. Uh, let me see the. Washington beat them 25 to 3 in one game and then 41 16. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Ravens beat them 34 17. Uh, the Cardinals beat them 38 10. Ouch. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I'll just keeping all that in mind. Was it, though, that they were unhealthy? Like it was it an injury issue? Or well, was it just? It's not like they were blowing teams out at the beginning of the year, the first four games. Right. With Dak in there, you know. And, you know, they had Ezekiel Elliott. They had all the receivers. Everybody was healthy at the start of the season. And, they, you know, they they weren't blowing teams out. As a matter of fact, all their games were pretty close in the week. Let me see. The uh, Rams beat them 20 to 17. Uh, the Falcons, they beat – 40 to 39. Yeah, that was that game. That was that game where, where Atlanta got up on them like bad, like right. 30, I don't know, 36 to nothing. And then the Cowboys came back and beat them. Right. And then uh, the Seahawks beat them 38 31. And then the Browns beat them 49 38. Ooh. And then they beat the Giants 37-34. So they were barely squeaking the wins by. They were putting up some points, though. Yeah, right. They'll put up some points. Uh, let's see. They had they had a few games where they only scored three and nine, mm-hmm. and 16, 17. But most of yeah, they had a lot of high-scoring uh, games. But a lot of it was because, like the Cleveland game, they were just, they were just stopped in that game. But then they just started throwing bombs and came back. You know, uh, Cleveland was playing kind of a prevent defense. You know, <laughs> that, that was, and that's what happened a lot is they were behind and they just, you know, start throwing the ball and teams were letting them move down the field. You know, the typical. Mm-hmm. They were playing from behind a lot and scoring a lot. So it, their their six and ten record is really not telling of how good. They're bad. They were. I don't think. So anyhow, let me get to let me get to all this. Um, they do very few deep pass plays. That kind of yes, really yes. I thought that Dak like I chunks know. it. That's what I thought too. What? I was very shocked by this. Here's what they do. They do. They do. Um. Uh. Run. 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 <laughs> No, they'll do like run, run, check down pass, run across the middle, short, uh, swing pass, uh, out route. You know, just these really, really short to middle is their game. And, and they like are Dinkin and Duncan. Yeah, yeah. And they are definitely a run first team. The, Dak Prescott, I mean, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, they run him up the middle like all the time. But he doesn't always go up to the middle. He bounces incredibly well. Like if he's running up the middle and there's not a hole, he bounces to the outside real quick. And he ain't going to be able to do that against us. I mean, JPP and Shaq got the outside. But he's really good at seeing, to, you know, when there's no hole there, he's going to bounce to the outside and run down the edges. But, they, I mean, they 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 are, they are an extremely boring vanilla def- offense. Very boring. Really? I was just like, I was like falling asleep watching it. I was like, Man, <laughs> this is boring. It, you know, they they run kind of a spread offense. You know, they get the receivers way out. They don't bunch them up a whole lot. Uh, you know, they, sometimes they'll have one tight end out there, 
you know, maybe maybe every now and then they'll have two, but it's not just not, not a staple. You know, they don't run two running backs and I formation, nothing like that. It's you know the guy Dax and shotgun Ezekiel. It's standing beside him. They got three wide receivers and a tight end. That's the vast majority of their games, and it's all these short routes. Now, mind you, I didn't have all twenty two watching this. I was just had to watch the broadcast, which sucked. So I couldn't see if Dak was missing guys running down deep or whatever. Uh, now they did hit a few deep balls, and almost all of them were the guys were extremely wide open. It was a screw up on the offense or the defense secondary. So it wasn't. They're not. So chunking. you you didn't see a a lot of like you see with us where the you know uh, fifty fifty balls, you know, or like you used to see with us, and in. You know, Dak only seems to throw it deep when he has to, or when a guy's wide open. You know, if if he if it looks like to me if they're covered at all, he's not even going to throw it down there unless he has to. You know, when he's really yeah, See, it was this very is strange. So weird because mm-hmm. I have this perception that they're this high flying mm-hmm. offense, mm-hmm. and you know, Dak Prescott is probably the next coming of Christ, yep. and yep. you know, it's all the in. Wow. I know. I was totally shocked. That's weird. (laughs) Yeah. I really was shocked. I was like, man, this is boring, dinky, dunky football. But are we surprised with Mike McCarthy? I mean, no, right. That's exactly uh, the year before that. I think they had the highest flying offense in the league. They almost 6,000 yards, like 5,000 and some yards, you know, in 2019. But of course, they sucked. You know, the defense sucked too. Yeah. Well, wasn't that kind of Jason Garrett's? M- well, he was kind of boring too. Now that I think about it, yeah, yeah. But it seemed if, like their offense was more high flying under Jason Garrett. I don't know, but you know. And again, I only watched the two games, and the, the only time I really saw Dak go deep was when there was a completely open receiver where the secondary screwed up, or when they had to because they were so far behind. You know? Does he seem like a quarterback worth forty million dollars no. a year? No, no. Why do they pay no. him that? Well, they're hard to find quarterbacks, I guess. But I guess forty million. No, no. Uh, but like I said, he will run up the middle if you give him open space. And Vita will gladly <laughs> assist him. Or Devin <laughs> White will take his head off. I know. Devin White's fast. You know, yeah. you might think it's open and you'll start running. Devin White's going to be yeah, right up your butt. he's so fast. Yeah. So it sounds like the, a lot is going to be on our linebackers. Between yeah. their dink and dunk strategy, mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott bouncing around mm-hmm. at the line when he sees any kind of resistance. And then Dak Prescott, same yep. thing. Yep, yep. You so Devin White correct. and Levante need to be on their stuff. Yeah, yes. Very much so. Now, with the Dak Prescott, I don't know if he's going to run that much anymore. You know, I mean, get, yeah. that's how he broke his ankle. He was scrambling, he was running, uh, got tackled, yeah. broke his ankle. No, he's not going. Especially not the first game, yeah. I think. Right. Like, you don't want to die the first game you come back. <laughs> not against this defense, that's for sure. But yeah, I was very surprised at how few deep pass plays he you know, I, I just assumed, thought, that it was a staple of their offense, like ours, kind mm-hmm. of, you know. And we do. Not, not too many teams have as many deep throws as we do. I but mean. why do you have those three stud receivers like that <laughs> if you're not even going to use them? I know, right? God, what a waste of resources. <laughs> oh. But uh, they are a pretty much run first team. It seems like everything is kind of fashioned around. Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, they, well, damn they, right, they paid him too. Yeah, yeah, he's making twenty five million <laughs> something like that. Uh, they're a, but both of them, him and oh god, what's the other guy's name? They, they're a very big part of the game. Pollard. Pollard. Yes, they. You know, they run them a lot, and almost exclusively up the middle, and they use them in check down all the time. Dak Prescott checks down all the time. He's a check down master. And, you know, they got these routes for me, you know, swing routes, some wheel routes, stuff like that. But they use running backs a lot, you know, uh, in, in protection, uh, in the running game, and then in the passing game. So the, their offense evolves around the running backs. 
Interesting. Yeah. So how prone is Dak to making mistakes? Is he mistake prone? Or it's, it sounds to me like he's a little conservative as very far as con- risk taking. Yes. Is. Yes. Very, very conservative. He, Like I said, he checks down quick. He doesn't, you know, if guys are covered, he'll just, you know, throw it somewhere else, it seems like. Uh, and again, I didn't have all 22, so I couldn't see what everybody was on the field was doing to judge how he was reading the field. But, yeah, he's real quick to check down, real quick. and But he doesn't have that pocket presence that you would expect from somebody of his caliber. He got I – got, I saw him get sacked a lot where he should have got rid of the ball sooner or, you know, stepped out of the pocket, got away from him. He just couldn't feel him coming, especially from behind. Like when they, they circle around him, he, he doesn't seem to have that sense. It's like the of opposite of Jameis Winston, who Jameis gets, <laughs> you know, he feels like phantom pressure and then he's going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Dak Prescott is like, there's pressure, yeah. doesn't feel it. Nothing. Yeah. I would say his scrambling is on par with like, a, I don't know, maybe a faster Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what he reminded he's so me lumbering. of. He's lumbering. Yeah, he, he just didn't – not a lot of grace. He's not out there okay. rocketing down the field. He needs a lot of space in front of him okay. to get some yardage. And, you know, he doesn't get out of people's grass that well. You know, he's, he's kind of a bigger guy, so he can, you know, handle guys grabbing on him and stuff like that. But, man, he was getting the ball knocked out of his hands and getting hit from behind and all this stuff. Just not that – you know, some quarterbacks just have that timing, that sense, or they could tell when somebody's coming. He doesn't seem to have that. Not this guy. Yeah. You are blowing my mind right now. I know. I was I was surprised watching all this. What the thing that surprised me the most was how boring it was. You know. I, I actually enjoyed watching the Rams defense more than I did. Mm-hmm. Watching the Dallas offense. Well, that's typical. Yeah, it's true. To be fair. Yeah. And they're a good defense too. They're a very good defense. It's hard not to play favorites in that. Yeah. Now, as far as the uh, defense is concerned, the uh, Dallas defense, they were just god-awful horrible. They they couldn't tackle. They didn't want to tackle. And they, I, I'm going to say this. The whole team, both offense and defense, didn't play with a lot of oomph or, mm. I don't know, desire. Like they really wanted to win, you know. They were well, just kind of going, kind of like Mike McCarthy. They were kind of, you know, just kind of going through the motions. They just want to get back and get a massage, you know. <laughs> I wonder field. how much of it, though, was COVID and not having people in the stands. Yeah. 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 That was weird watching that, going back and watching mm-hmm. those games. I'm like, I'm they, so glad we're not going to have to do that. Oh, I know, man. Again. Thursday night is going to be incredible. Amazing. It's going to be so loud. It, it's going, it, it's going to be. Wonderful for the, uh, the networks and the NFL and, and for everybody out there because we need this, man. We need this. We need we need to see. You know, I, the college football. I'm seeing the stadiums filled and people going crazy. I love it. I'm just like, yes. I was just thinking about that. Like you saw the reaction to. I guess it was UA, USC mm-hmm. to the full stands and yes. everyone going off. So. I am so excited for an NFL game like that. I, I'm excited for these super spreader events myself. <laughs> I am too. I am too. Yes, and the NFL needs this. Uh, they're you know we they had trouble last year with ratings and all that good stuff, and this is the perfect game. It's the perfect stadium. It, the, this is going to kick off this year so wonderfully. So that, now that gets me to what do I think is going to happen. I think, and this is speculation on my part, but I think Tom Brady and this team feel like they have something to prove. They do, they don't feel like they got enough credit for last year. Uh, you know, the, the defense especially. You know, I think the defense is really pissed that everybody says that the reason why they did so good was because of uh, the Chiefs' offensive line. You know, we talked about this is when we got Brady. When we got Brady, we had said – you know, our defense is going to show up and they're going to start stomping people because they don't want everybody to say they won because of Tom Brady. And so they did. You know, they were stomping people. And then they get to the Super Bowl, they stomp Patrick Mahomes. And what does everybody do? Oh, uh, it was because of the offensive line of the Chiefs was <laughs> banged up and injured and 
you're like, what? So they, this team, I think they have got something to prove. And I think Brady is – he's just dead set on just lighting it up this year. You know, they, they've got a full year under their belt now. These guys are the same guys. None of these players have ever done this before. None of these players have ever had all 22 starters come back. They've never played with the same guys before. None of them. Even through college. This doesn't happen. You know? And so they're all back. The gang's all back together. They're all pissed because they don't feel like they got the credit they deserve. And everybody's expecting the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl this year. So, so now you put that on top of we're opening up NFL season on Thursday night in front of the whole world. In against, our stadium. In our stadium mm-hmm. where we just won the Super Bowl against America's team. Tickets are like $1,000 a piece for the nosebleeds. We got a pissed off defense who feels like they've got something to prove. You got an offense that feels like uh, you know half of them didn't catch a they're mad because they didn't catch a pass in, in the Super Bowl, you know. But they, they've they all worked together. Their timing is spectacular. Now, if you don't think so, go back and watch that Texans game. We had two drives. One was 90 yards. The other one was, what, 96? We had, like, one drop, like, went off Mike Evans' hands. And that was it. <laughs> it was just, like, machine like, work. Oh, click, my click, click. gosh. Now, I had, what? like, goosebumps. Just watch. And it, yeah. it's preseason. Yeah, we've but watched it, like, like, three or four oh, times. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Look at that. Just something to behold. Yeah, and the I mean they, they it was like clockwork. They were just like bing, bing, bam, boom, boom. And you know, that's what Dallas is gonna have to face. You know, coming Dallas is gonna a, have to a face a completely new defense. With a completely new defense, completely new defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. uh banged up offensive line somewhat, and probably a skittish quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, it's for some yeah, it's, it's going to take him quite a few games to get his footing back. So uh-huh. I, I see what you did there. I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> I've watched that that the, the video of him breaking his leg. Oh, oh my god. god! Yeah, I it wasn't one of those. Ralph, it yeah. was like a dangly, yes, dangly yeah. limb, and he like picked it up and he was oh, like, oh god, yeah, like moving it around. Yeah. Oh no! Now that you said that, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, was and it on your start- phone? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Is that where you watched it? I've got it saved. Yeah, I know you do. But uh, yeah, they, it was like he picked it up and like trying to like trying to put it, it back together. Trying to like put it back together, <laughs> and then you saw him like look over to the sideline and just like start going, "Come on, get over here, bring the cart." Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna cry right here. Oh my gosh. Uh So I can't. With all that being said, and we know Dan Quinn, we know Dan Quinn, we know what he brings. We don't know exactly what he's going to do with his defense, but we look at the pieces he's got, and you go, there ain't a whole lot you're going to be able to do with it. Mediocrity. Yeah. You'll be lucky if you bump him up to 15th in the league. You know, right now I mean, the bar is so low, though. I mean, they could improve like 10 spots. They'd still be bottom of the league, but everyone mm-hmm. would be ha- – probably in their fan base would be very happy yeah. with that improvement. So, Yes, probably very much so. So here's what I'm thinking. This is this is my my uh, full full uh, conclusion to all of it. Okay, we're gonna stomp them. I'm talking about it's gonna be a bad beating. We want this. I think Tom Brady has got these guys looking for blood, and it's gonna be it's gonna be like the old Belichick days. And I, I'm interested to see who's running this offense because I, I listened to. Uh, interview with Byron Leftwich and the, the stuff I'm listening to Bruce Arians, it's like, you know, yeah, no, this is the player's team. You know, this, we just kind of uh, get out of their way. You know, it's what they've all been saying. You know, we're kind of just, you know, and I think, <clears throat> I think Tom Brady, he might've been the one in New England that was running up scores on people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they love to do that. They would do that they all the time. There was it, right? no mercy ever. And there was a couple times at the end of the season last year where we took off, put our took our foot off the gas. I don't think we're going to do that this year. And I think Thursday night we're going to make a statement to the whole NFL. Ooh. And if you don't have your bets in that we're going to win the Super Bowl this year, you need to do it now if you think we're if you think it's a good bet because I guarantee you Friday 
the Buccaneers are going to be projected to win the damn Super Bowl. <laughs> I th- I I honestly think we're going to stomp them so bad, and we're just not going to take our foot off the gas. You know, I think Brady wants to make a statement. This defense really wants to make a statement, and uh, I think that, you know this is the perfect time for them to do it. They're opening. We're opening the NFL in our home stadium. We just won a Super Bowl in, and uh, oh my gosh, everybody on our team is pissed. You know. I'm so excited now that you're talking about them. Yeah, I, I, like them. I don't see anything there they can do. Okay. Uh, you know, Zeke Elliott, he's a good running back. Mm-hmm. He's Perfect. tough. He's kind of hard to get down, but he's not. Uh, we faced better running backs, or at least as good, and stopped them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our run defense is still going to be top notch. I swear, man, if we get this third year in a row of being the number one run defense, man, that's the record, Bucks. That's got to be a record. I haven't looked it up yet, but I know it's got to be a record. I know. And, uh, yeah, th- and, you know, if you stop their run, then, you know, they're kind of they're kind of pedestrian after that. And like I said, they'll, they'll be chunking the ball down the field, but only when they have to. And they're going to have to, you know, because I, I think we're going to score over 40 points. All right. And I'll, I'll be surprised Ooh. if they break 20. Yeah, I think it's going to be a beatdown. Okay. I just don't well, see anything there. I, I had my score prediction as you were talking, so it's a little bit in line with what you were saying. Okay. You ready to do it? You ready to do score predictions? Yeah. Let's we do need, it. We need a little little sound a intro jingle. thing. I know. Ralph, yes. make us a jingle. Hold up. I've got one. I could pull one up. Okay. It might, it might take a little long. All right. We'll do it next time. <laughs> next time. Let's do it next time. How about you sing for us? Please, no. Uh, okay. Ready? Yes. Molly is predicting. Um, I'm going 38 to 17 Buccaneers. 38, 17 Buccaneers. That is so close to what I was going to say. I got to redo these sheets because I don't have which team we pick. Uh, I'm going to go. Man, I was going to go 42, 17. Just do it. That's fine. What did you say? Let's That's only a four closer. point difference. That's all right. Whoever is closer. See, my thing is, is that we're going to start stomping them. They're going to start throwing these passes. They'll probably get a couple touchdowns that away. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. There's 17, I'll just say 24. I'll say 24. So I'm going to say 42, 24. Okay. And this is this is me being objective as I possibly can. You know, I mean, I was watching this. I'm looking at this, and I'm like, how in the world does this team think they're going to beat us? And, you know, you, I've heard all the announcers and the analysts, and, you know, they're all like, hey, this is going to be a great game and the three best receivers in the league oh, and gosh. Dallas and Patak. And, and I'm watching it. Okay, and I'm like, they're hmm? going to piss me off with that, the three best receivers. And like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. They're Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Antonio Brown. Thank you. I don't know how you even argue that. Well, you know, people argue stupid stuff. You know, there's people that argue that they can there's handle flat venomous snakes. There's flat earthers out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. But we're going to find out Thursday night. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. Yeah. I, I don't even think we're going to start off slow. I think we're going to come oh, out. Oh, no. And just... I don't know. We do tend to do the three and out thing on offense pretty regularly. Okay. We might for the like, first drive. Yeah. Might. See, don't panic, guys, if that's what happens. I'm kind of numb to it at this point. Like, it doesn't really bother me anymore because mm-hmm. that's how we were last year, too. And then it was like, it was no problem to put up 40 points. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it, and and again, anything could happen. We could lose. And if we do lose, I'm not going to be disheartened whatsoever. It's a long season. It's actually longer than it normally is now due to the extra game. And... It's always best to be good at the end. So if I if we suck, I want it to be at the beginning. I so know. I'm not worried about this game as far as our future season. I just I really think we want to make a statement. You know, because nobody nobody gives us the respect we deserve. Nobody. I mean, good lord, they have the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. We didn't just win the Super Bowl. We dominated the Super Bowl, and now they have the team that we dominated in the Super Bowl. Ahead of us. I know. <laughs> no, I mean, nobody's given us any credit. And I think we, I think the whole team wants to go out there and just say, you know, plant their flag. 
I think that's what we're going to see. It just from all the attitudes of all the guys I've seen on the interviews and the press conferences and stuff, I mean, he's supremely confident, but a little bit of chips on their shoulders, man. I mean, they got a little bit of a grudge going on with this stuff. In particular, I feel like Shaq Barrett is probably pissed that there weren't more people calling, you know, to get him signed, mm. recognize yeah. what kind of player he is. Mm-hmm. And the Bucks were the only ones who, and they gave him exactly what he wanted. Yes. And this will be a good coming out party for him. You know, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't do, he didn't have the stats I wanted to see him have last year. Oh man. And Vita, oh, gosh, he's, this is going to be such a great game. <laughs> I know. When you started talking about, oh, they like run it up the middle. I'm like, oh, good lord. I know. Oh, well, that's, that's the, there goes their game plan. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Well, I'm watching this. I'm like, they know they can't do this, right, against us. And I'm do you seeing think them. they do? Okay, let, we no. we got us drink every time they try to run it up the middle. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-uh. We'll, be, we'll be drunk quick. We drink Don't water. Don't give up on that, right? We'll do shots of beer. I know. I'm going to bring you back to high school. Some of that, that wine cooler stuff you drink that's like two percent mm-hmm. alcohol. <laughs> no, they're like four or five percent. <laughs> Same difference. As much as beer. <laughs> Not the beer I drink. Beer I drink is like nine percent. That's what I like. Stout ales and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I agree with who was it that says Craig. the count, Craig. I agree with you, man. I don't think you're that yeah. far off. <laughs> 76 10. I mean, what if we break like 50 points? Won't that be insane? Yeah. It could, I, I could definitely see it happen. I mean, it's it's Dan Quinn's defense. We look at look at what he did at Atlanta for all those years. Did they ever have a top 10 defense? No. He couldn't ever get them over the hump. And uh now he's got a bunch of rookies and a bunch of scrubs. I mean, there's like three people on that defensive side of the ball who I could say, you know, they're 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 okay. The rest of them I don't know about or nobody knows about because they're fresh off the frying pan. I, th- I man, I'm telling you, I got so pumped up watching that stuff today because I'm I'm watching them and I'm going, man, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Oh, no. Nothing. Oh, it's gonna be so awesome. Yeah. And again, it makes me it makes you realize when you watch Dallas and you know how everybody talks them up and this and you know Galloway and Cooper and uh, Lamb and Ezekiel Ellie. I keep saying Galloway. He was like ten years ago, wasn't he? Uh, and all these guys, you know, they talk them up and everything, and then you watch them and you go, "Man, our team is so much better." <laughs> no. I know it's so annoying. It oh. just annoys me. Yeah, it annoys me. That's kind of what bothers me about all the talk with Aaron Rodgers. Aside from him being a pissy bitch, I'm like, they don't talk. You know, they talk about him, and then he does nothing in the play. You know, they. I mean, I guess they went to the championship and then got embarrassed. So they did get that far at least, but. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's just <laughs> you just hate Aaron Rodgers. I just hate him so much. <laughs> One thing I will say about Dak Prescott, uh, it, he he doesn't throw bad passes and he doesn't generally make bad decisions. You know, so you know, he's pretty accurate and like you said, he's conservative. So he doesn't he doesn't make dumb decisions. He's not going to throw into a bunch of traffic and uh, you know with a, with a safety coming running over cross. He's not going to throw the ball deep and hmm. he he just seems to make good decisions. He's pretty accurate, but that's really all I could say about him. I, we'll see. I might be totally wrong, but I'm watching these games today, and I'm just like, oh, God, they were going to get slaughtered. <laughs> well, I have no faith in Mike McCarthy either. Well, you know – oh, no, definitely. Yeah. You know, last year we, we were actually horrible on primetime. Yeah. So, so, you know, and that's what most people watch. Most people watch primetime games. And, you know, so that's all they saw, the Buccaneers, until the Super Bowl, or, you know, the playoffs and the Super Bowl. You know, so they had a bad taste in their mouth. The Buccaneers kind of felt like we backed into the playoffs mm-hmm. and then got lucky enough to win. But, no, all of us that watch them, you know, we know that, no, those primetime games were the exceptions. Those were bad games. We don't play, but we beat ourselves. They was, those were bad games. So now here it is. We got a chance on primetime. Open it up to prove all of our haters wrong. And they I'm telling you they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it in a bad way, man. Just it's gonna be a beatdown. Ooh. 
So it's going to be like the Super Bowl where it's no fun except for Bucks fans. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. lucky for us, everyone hates the Dallas Cowboys. So they might get some enjoyment out of watching them Ooh. get embarrassed on prime time. That's true. You know, the whole NFC East is going to love it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're all but gonna be- I think as many people hate Tom Brady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's Definitely. a huge toss up there. Who Who's hated more, the Dallas Cowboys or Tom Brady? <laughs> You should do a poll. I know. <laughs> oh. So there you go. That's got I it. might do a Twitter poll on that, actually, now that you say that. Do we ever do Twitter polls? Not regularly. But we should. I uh, like doing them. Again, I love Twitter polls. You do. I love polls. So we'll see. You know, And they might change things up. They might you know, just come out and start throwing deep right away. Who knows? They're going to have time. You know, we're going to get to Dak. Got, yeah. the, the Rams were getting to them, and you know our defensive line is equivalent. I would say they're better, but yeah, you know, if nothing else, they're equivalent, and they were getting to him quite frequently. So we're we'll we we will not going we're not we're not gonna have a problem in that area too much. You know. Oh my gosh! Like, there's no area of our team that maybe special teams. Like, how's our special teams? Nothing spectacular. Okay, yeah, that's our only weakness. I would say mm-hmm. our biggest weakness. Which didn't really hurt us that bad that Not at all. Now, New Orleans got us a couple times with the run backs, but uh, somebody else did too. Washington? I think it was in the playoffs. They mm-hmm. popped off a couple big ones on us. <clears throat> but, yeah, I didn't know uh, Dallas's the return game wasn't anything to write home about. So, here we go. We'll see. Guys, next time you hear from us, we're either going to be crying or celebrating. Either way, we'll probably be hungover. <laughs> That's a fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, man, get amped up. Get amped up. This, this is a big game. This is a big game. This is one of the biggest games in Buccaneers history, I think. One of them. I, I'll put it up there in the top top 10, top 15. You know, this is just a big thing. I don't, I don't even know if we've had a game this big other than a Super Bowl, you know, where it's like we're opening up the season at home. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, you done? I'm done. All right, guys. Pray to the Bucks. Pray to the, the football gods. Let's get this going. Let's do this. Season Make starting. Your sacrifice. <laughs> Make your sacrifice. Whatever you're going to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time. Go Bucks.